What's up guys? I got a special treat for you today. I'm here with my boy Mike Salemi and he's going to take us through a workout using minimal equipment. But I know a lot of you guys, big goal is getting strong, getting more mobile, and this workout is really gonna take you there. So we're gonna get into the workout. Can you just give us a, a quick uh, outlook of what we're going into? Yeah, simple and effective. Yeah. Simple and effective. Basically two training tools. You can take them anywhere, the kettlebell and then the supless hertz bands. And so basically what I walk you guys through is the kettlebell swing. It's going to condition the muscles of the lower back, the glutes, and the hamstrings. Yeah. Uh, the other thing we did was the, uh, the Hertz pummel and squat combo, which very few people do or even yeah. know about. So with the pummel, you've got basically a shoulder mobility movement, a circular movement, which kind of conditions the shoulder as it was supposed to be trained. Mm. Uh, and then we combine that with a squat. Dope. Let's get into it. Right now, I want to lay down for you the kettlebell swing, the two-hand kettlebell swing, which is one of the best total body movements that's truly going to condition the backside of your body, the posterior chain, the lower back, the glutes, and the hamstrings. Let me show you what it looks like, and then I'm going to give you three tips that's going to help you maximize this movement. So one of the things you might have noticed is the main kind of action center of this movement happens around the hips. So when you're doing this movement, you want to think about when the bell travels down, the hips shift back. When the hips shift back, you can almost think it's like a deadlift position. It's a hip hinging movement. When the hip shifts back, there's not too much forward movement of the knees. If when you're doing the kettlebell swing, you notice your knees coming forward, that's going to let you know you're working more of the front of the thighs, which for this specific variation of the swing, that's not what we want. We want to shift the hips back. So now you could think of it also like your shins are more or less vertical. So when you're performing the swing, shift the hips back and forward, shift the hips back and forward. The second tip I want to give you is a lot of people have challenges when they're performing the swing. And I'll show you what this common error looks like. Basically when the bell comes up, looks like someone's doing almost like a shoulder front raise. You can see I'm pulling the bell to the top position with my shoulders. Ideally, all the power happens from the hips and the kettlebell just simply floats to the apex position. So when you're performing the swing, if you notice or your shoulders are getting fatigued at any level or any degree, you know you need to be relaxed with the arms and have all the legs doing all the work. The last tip I want to give you, tip number three, has to do with this principle called connection. This is uh, probably one of the most valuable tips I ever learned. I learned this when I was training out in Russia. And basically, what this principle of connection means is on the way down, you don't start hinging the hips back until the lower forearms right here make connection with the pelvis. When this lower forearm connects to the pelvis, that's your cue. Boom, okay, I need to go back. A lot of times people will swing when the bell comes down, their hips will pull out early, and you'll notice a rounding of the back. It's a lot of, lot of strain on the back. I'll show you what that air looks like real quick. My hips pull back and the bell's down as opposed to wait, 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 connect. Wait, 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 connect. So the best tip I can give you in terms of a cue is simply to be patient. Wait, 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 connect, go back, and then drive the hips forward to allow the kettlebell float to the apex. All right, guys, so for this exercise, this is called the combination pummel squat. I'm utilizing the supless Hertz bands, and all this is gonna take is one single band, which is why I love this exercise and love this training tool. So for the pummel, this is gonna mimic as if you're almost like a grappler, but phenomenal movement for just for the whole conditioning, mobility, and control of the shoulder. So let me show you what it looks like, and I'll break this down for you. So from here, that's the pummel, that's the squat. You can go slow and controlled, or if you want to be more dynamic, so as you might have noticed, the first movement is that shoulder movement, the pummel. And so the way you want to do this is I take the supless hertz bands, slide my hand through. So now the color is at the level of the wrist. I grab the yellow, never the black. Now from here, when you're first learning, I like to keep my shoulders square. Once you get more comfortable, then you can add a little bit more fluidity to the movement. 
So from here, I'm gonna posture up. I'm gonna pull the band to the center line of the chest. From here, I'm thinking the elbow circles down. Circle, circle, goes up, around. And then I hold what I call the flexing at the beach position, right? So you gotta lock this shoulder in place, maintain posture. Then to reverse the movement, you just simply reverse that same pattern. So the elbow goes up, crosses the face, control, 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 and control it until the arm is locked. And notice, when my arm is straight, there's tension on the band, so I'm not looking for slack. If you have slack, you're not getting any feedback from the band. So from here, you pull in once again, keep the thumb close, circle, 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 finish facing square. From this position, my thumb is pretty close to my shoulder, so I'm not out here. Circle, 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 and return. Component number two now incorporates the squat. From here, you hit that pummel. Now, one of the things that you'll notice is where the band sits behind my shoulder. If it's here, I'm not gonna be super secure. You basically want it behind the shelf of the deltoid. So you hit this position, now you're almost like, in a, like a rack position, let's say. Then from here, you maintain the chest, let the knees glide forward, and now you're in a squat. To do it again, here, squat, here. One thing you'll feel is the band wants to break your posture. So you're forced to let the knees, or allow the knees to glide forward and keep in a good position. To string both those together, it's exactly what we went over. You hit the center, pummel, pummel, pummel. Once you finish the position, then that's your cue. Okay, now I squat down. Stand up. And what I'd suggest is first take it in parts, kind of pummel is step one, squat is step two. But then as you get more, you get better and more comfortable with it, then your goal is to smooth the transition. So hit the pummel, then squat. And that is the pummel squat combination with the supless hertz bands. Uh, you can use it for shoulder mobility, leg conditioning, or just if you wanna have some more creative fun with just one band. So hope you enjoy that one. Awesome, Mike, thank you so much. And I know the question that's on everyone's mind is how many, how many sets and reps should I do for this workout? Yeah, what I would say is, I would suggest, let's say if we break it up into like a low level of fitness and skill to medium to high. Um, you know, if you're on a lower level of fitness, I would say like eight or so reps on the swing keep the quality of the movement high. If the quality of the movement goes down to any degree, drop sets over. So eight-ish repetitions there, and then with the pummel squat combo, I would do the same. Just keep it eight and eight, eight each arm. Okay. In terms of the number of sets, I would say three and five is, between three and five is good. If you've got a higher level of fitness, I would say between 10 to 15 swings, and then between 10 to 12 pummel squats. Then you can do between four and even 10 sets if you've got a higher level of conditioning. Keep the rest periods as short as possible, but if you need up to 30-ish seconds or even 45, take it, um, but enjoy it. The most important thing is that you're enjoying this workout, enjoying how you're moving and how you're feeling into your body. So have fun with it. Sweet. Mike, thank you so much for, for putting this dope information out. Um, where can people find you? So the best place is gonna be uh, Instagram at mike.salemi, S-A-L-E-M-I, and then uh, also YouTube. So I just started a YouTube channel, which is just my name, Mike Salemi. And I've also got my new kettlebell lifestyle program, which is basically, um, it's a very holistic integrated program to train with kettlebells and teach you a, basically a process of how to know the internal wisdom of how hard to push it, how much to back off. So you're gonna really learn skills for life to teach you how to be vital and be a high level performer using a kettlebell. So good, man. Make sure to like this video, subscribe to Strength Side. We'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. So Mike, can you tell us a little bit about your journey and, and where you are teaching now? Yeah, I mean, I started as a competitive power lifter. So I competed for about 10 years, got super involved in the sport. And then while I was also a strength and conditioning coach, I was looking for movements and training tools that I could take with my athletes, apply to my athletes, but also do so, let's say, on the court or on the field. Mm. And that led me into kettlebells. And as soon as I started working with kettlebells, I actually started using them at Westside Barbell when I was training out there for a little bit and uh, visiting that gym, but basically, I mean, fast forward, you know, 15 years, I've been using kettlebells for well over 15 years, competing for over 10. Uh, was fortunate enough to win the world championships in the WAKSC and reach master of sport, which is kind of like, you could think of it like a black belt level in kettlebells, kettlebell sport. Wow, yeah. And so, so I know that now you're really focused on uh, the holistic side of things and, and making people feel good. What, what, is, <laughs> what does that look like? Yeah, that's pretty much all I'm about these days. And that's mainly because like, even though I would say like I reached a reasonable level in the sports that I was competing in, 
my body was shot. Mm. Like I had injuries to my left arm, uh, lower back pain, um, knee pain. So my body was just honestly just wrecked. Yeah. And so even though like I was able to reach a high level, it was not sustainable. Right. And then so I started really getting into like teachings from Paul Check and started learning about more of a holistic side. So now my whole mission is to teach people a methodology, a process, a system of how to reach high levels of just athletic potential and sports performance, but do so in a way that's actually sustainable and supports the body. So mm. it's way more integrated and way more holistic. Like now I would say I feel more athletic and just like spry than I probably ever have for sure. Yeah, that's super dope. That's what we're all looking for here too. <laughs>